Hi guys. It's uh, another week, another day. Let's go down to weekly string, see what kind of string they've created for this week. <clears throat> As you know, I don't always use it. Uh, sometimes I challenged myself to really try really hard to use it every single pattern. Lately I have not been using it, but you know, I check it out anyways, just in case you guys want to see it. There's week string number 69. I'm going to give that one a little bit of a draw here. Um, you can't see what I'm doing. It's dark. We are having a bit of a rainstorm, so I apologize for that. I'm going to just scoot that off to the side. Maybe you can see me a little bit. Um, it looks like it's kind of like that. And then something up here like this. And then one coming from that side like that, right? Kind of like that. So, string number 69. And I will just leave this over to the side for reference in case I decide that that's where I want to play. So I'm going to go back home to the home page which is at pattern-collections.com. Remember, you need that dash or else you will end up in the wrong place. So go to Pattern Focus and find today's pattern. So it looks like today's is going to be by Ina. Oh, it's another one that's um, highlighted in the Tangle It Planner. So... Um, if you're interested in getting any of Ina's books, they're always located. Um, let me go back one. They're always located in links at the bottom of the website. You can uh, always find. Here's her newest ebook, but um, you can find her other books. I think they're on the home page. At the bottom of the home page, let me see. Oh, they used to be right there. They might be there on the. Not the ebooks. There should be regular books too. Oh well, somewhere in there, there's a there's a link. Um, just search for Ina's books. There should be a link there somewhere. Or you can just... Uh, I know these are uh, available on Amazon. So just look up Tangle It Planner on Amazon. You can find it. So, looks like... This one's sort of a leaf shape, right? And you're, you're probably... Those of you who are not artistic and who can't do representational drawing, you're thinking to yourself, I can't draw that. That looks too hard. I get you. But it's easy. She's figured out a way to do this in a, in a manner that is consistent and easy to do. So you're going to draw a little curvy line for the stem, right? And then in, I would maybe do it in pencil. Make this sort of big teardrop shape. And it might be easier to make that shape first and then put your, your line here for your stem. I don't know. But just make this kind of shape in pencil. And then you're going to go and you're going to just do dashes along that shape. Okay. And then all you have to do is make sort of a curvy V. wherever those open spaces are from the dash. And that's all you have to do. And that makes this leaf shape. Look how easy that is. But you can do them with different depths and dimension. You can have longer or shorter of these little V shapes. And they'll make your leaf sort of different, differently shaped. Um, and here they're overlapping in one another. And I think that's sort of where I'm going to go with that. So let's turn on a light. 
Close your eyes, everybody. Here's the hard part. Oh, goodness. Ah, took it a second to find the white balance. See how much better that is with the nice light. Okay, let's grab a piece of paper. Grab myself a pen. I don't know if I want a border or not, but I'm gonna put one in with pencil. And it's been raining all morning. Rained overnight. I thought for sure the contractor was not gonna show up today. It is now 9.30 in the morning. The sun has come out a little bit and they are here. Dang, I think that guy just sits and watches out the window waiting for the rain to stop and boom, calls his boys and says, let's go boys, we're going to work today. They're amazing. I am so excited and thrilled that they are my contractor. You have no idea. Okay, I'm going to draw in pencil a sort of a teardrop shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just sort of a general idea. And then I think I'm going to draw a couple of them. Uh, maybe one here. And maybe one. Maybe one. Maybe here. And that one you won't see much of because I've done it off the edge of my page, right? Um, so I'm going to start with this one in front. And I'm going to have the stem come from out here in the corner of my page because that's where I think I want it. Yeah, something like that. You guys can zoom in a little bit. Okay. So you may hear some construction noise um, because, you know, they're here. I didn't expect them to be here, but they are. So, And then go like that. And then just come around and make little dashes along your shape. They do not have to be perfect. They do not have to be spaced the same. Some bigger, some smaller. It's okay. Like that. And then we're going to make sort of curvy V shapes. And I want to curve kind of this way. So I'm going to do the first one like here. That kind of gives me the idea where, where, where to head with this. I'm going to go really big with that one. And this one. And that. And that. And that like this how easy that is and then I'm going to curve the other way for the other side And just like that, we've made that leaf. Now, if we want to make that stem a little bigger, we can do that. We can, we can emphasize that a little bit. Maybe make it a little longer. A little bolder. Something like that. <clears throat> there we go. And now, I'm not sure I like where I put my uh, leaf shapes with my pencil. Well, I'm going to erase those and I'm going to try again. Because I think I don't like where I stuck them. So I'm going to do again here. I'm going to do that one more like that. And maybe, maybe this one's going to come.
more like that. Let's give this a go. And I'm not going to draw this because that's behind my border. I'm not going to draw that part. And I'm not going to draw that little bit of an edge right there. So I'm just going to do my dashes. I'm going to go ahead and do those dashes right in there so you can see. But there's something happening behind there. You won't see that. You'll hear you see that and that like that. And then it's gonna have a stem come this way. I don't know why I didn't draw my border because now I've made my border in a way. You know what? I think that's probably I'm, I'm second guessing myself. I think that's why I didn't draw my border yet. I think I am going to go ahead and draw this out here and let it stick out from my border and then I'll draw the border behind. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I want this sort of a shape here. This one I'm going to make way down deeper here. That's where I want to go. Way down deeper like so. And then you would maybe see part of that. And you'd probably see maybe a little bit here. like that yeah okay I'm good with that make this a little bit fatter like so and I think I want this stem kind of crossing over that one, I think. Like so. Yeah. Okay. I'm happier with that. Okay. And then I'm going to do one more. So this one's going to go here. And maybe there. And you're going to see that line through there. And there. And there. And there. Down here. Like that. And then this one's going to come, the stem is going to go kind of this way, I think. Something like that. And something like this. Like that. And then I'm going to put this stem coming that way. basically it for the pattern. But 
I think what I'll do to emphasize that dimensionality of the leaf shape, I think I'm going to decide one side of these are going to have a thicker, uh, like a thickness to it. And then I also want to make sure I've got my border in. I think I want to make a brush border today. Oh yeah, how pretty is that? That's beautiful. I like that. You now you're a little close. Just a little. Okay. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to use my kneaded eraser. I love this kneaded eraser. You guys know that. Um, you can you pull on it and stretch it and make it into whatever shape you want. It feels really good in the hand. Makes me happy. It's like playing with Play-Doh. And it doesn't leave any residue. It's not very good if you've drawn a thick, deep line. So like if you're if you're doing a lot of sketching with, with deep, harder lines, it's not as good. Then you really need a different, you know, like maybe the white eraser or something. But uh, I really like this kneaded eraser for the light lines because it doesn't leave any of that eraser fuzz that you get. I don't like eraser fuzz. Doesn't tear up your paper. I really like it. Okay, so now I'm thinking I want a little bit thicker of a line on one side. So I'm going to grab my, I'm going to go with the 03 size. It's a little bit thicker nib. And I'm going to decide that on this side of each of these lines, I'm going to make just a little bit thicker like that. I think that will give a little bit of dimension to this shape that it doesn't currently have. Something like that. And then on this side, it needs to be on this one. Just like that. I think. Yeah, that helped. Could even make it a little bit more bold but I don't think I'm going to but I could so it's going to be on this side this side up here and then this side of here You know what, guys, I have got this annoying chirp in my house somewhere. You know that kind of low battery chirp that, that some devices will start to make? Uh, most especially like um, smoke detectors uh, will we'll start doing that. And every so often it'll go... And that's supposed to warn you that the battery is going low. But it doesn't do it often enough, at least not yet, for me to tell where the heck the darn sound is coming from. It's driving me nuts. Every, I don't know, four or five minutes, I'll hear one little... I can't tell where it's coming from. It's driving me crazy. I wish it would just... 
start chirping like more frequently. I know that they do it, you know, the manufacturers do it so that it does it a little bit and then it does a little bit more until, you know, it, you finally get that it's running out of battery. I would rather that the darn thing would just go cheep, 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 you know, a consistent beep that I could find. One little chirp every five or six minutes. It's driving me crazy. I've been, I, I spent half the morning just standing in one place in the living room and I get a little close, what I thought was closer to the sound. And then I stay, stand there for a little bit. Nope. Now the sound was, sounded like it was over here. Nope. Now the sound sounded like it was over here. I, I stood in every bedroom that has the smoke alarms because that was the first thing I thought of was a smoke alarm. Because I can't, I don't know what other devices we have that would cheat, have that little chirpy sound like that. I, I don't know. It's driving me nuts. So if I happen to hear it when I'm in here, that would be good. That would mean it's in this room somewhere. Uh, my son thought he heard it. He, he stood in the downstairs bedroom uh, next to the smoke alarm, but then he heard it again. It wasn't coming from that room. It was coming from somewhere else. But neither of us could figure out what in the world that sound was coming from. Yeah, that, that little bit of of added just on one. So I just did, like on the, I don't know, you, I'm sure you're watching, but if the, if the V was like that with a, like that, I chose, it's like, like, let's do this and that. And then I left that one not done. Or if the V went the other way, maybe not do that and just do this. One or the other. You know, make a choice where you want the bolder lines. But just having that little bit of extra bold certainly made a difference, didn't it? And now I can shade and I can put the name of the pattern because, you know, I've already forgotten the name of the pattern. I Zaz Leaf. Z, A, Z. All of a sudden decided to draw my thing in uppercase. I don't know why. Oh, because the Zaz is all in uppercase. That's why. Um, I don't know why I did leaf in uppercase. Okay, I'm going to sign out. And then I'm going to just do a little bit of shading. Um, clearly, I need to shade where this leaf overlaps this one being really careful not to shade in I only want to shade where this leaf is actually touching this leaf not where this leaf is overlapping the background does that make sense I hope that makes sense Feels like forever since I last draw, drew tiles on the camera. Been doing a little bit of art, but it hasn't been tangles and it hasn't been on camera. So, been doing a little painting, been enjoying myself. Hope you guys uh, have looked up Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa on YouTubes. I just so much enjoy her tutorials and I've gone back and done some of her older ones and I I can see her amazing uh and and her and her husband their amazing growth in what they've done to make their channel production worth amazing amazing. Uh I didn't realize how uh, rudimentary their production quality was at the beginning um, because they've 
improve their um, equipment slowly over time. You really don't notice that things have gotten better until you go back and look at an older video. And oh my goodness. So, so different. I'm going to do... at the edge and just a little bit down each leaf I think like that um, but I think everybody is probably like that on YouTube I, I hazard a guess that if you go back on any of the people who have um, long duration YouTube channels that uh, that their production quality has gotten better over time. They've learned how to stay in frame. They've learned how to uh, edit better. They've learned how to, um, you know, gotten better sound. They bought a better camera, whatever it is. Um, I, I hazard a guess that if you go back to people's older channel, um, that you can tell a difference between their production quality and you know as as their channels grow my guess is that they have the the funds to increase their their thing like like uh the coonies they they did a, a crowd funding sort of a thing um i don't remember it wasn't patreon it was gofundme i think they, they did a, a thing, a fundraising thing, to try to get, um, they want to build a new studio. I mean, a full studio, so that it's not like, I think right now it's in the corner of their garage, maybe, or in their kitchen. I don't know, it's it's the corner, it's in the corner of the house, you know, the kids come and go, the, you can hear at the beginning of the, the early one that I just watched the other day, um, you can hear the dog barking, and you know, all that kind of stuff that, that makes it quirky and fun, but that, um, you know, after a while, you go, oh my goodness, so much better with the better studio. I'm hoping to have that same experience. Um, I, I know I've gotten better at my camera angles and so that you guys can see what I'm doing um, and so that the camera is not like... <clears throat> in my way when I first started I wanted the camera angle to be a certain way because I thought that would be the way I would want to view it I would want to view it exactly the way my face views what I'm doing while I'm drawing and I soon quickly discovered that to put the camera where I want the viewer to see means that the camera is right in front of my face and I can't see what I'm doing. And I had to put my arms like wrapped around both sides of the camera. It was awkward, really bad. And, and I wasn't comfortable and I didn't think I did a very good job. And so, you know, I quickly had to change that. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a learning process, but I left those videos up there. They're, they're, yeah, they're there. Um, and then I had a camera that couldn't take video longer than 15 minutes, 12 minutes. I, th it was short and I'd have to remember to stop what I was doing, you know, pause it. Like, like I would, I would draw to a certain point and it was like, okay, I'm at so many minutes in and I have to stop. And so I would hold my hand in a, and freeze. And then I would go reach up and I would push the button to stop the recording. And then I would start the recording again and exactly with my hand in exactly the same place. So I hadn't moved and then uh, would have to stitch those little video clips together because my, I didn't, I don't have a video camera. I have, and I don't, a lot of people record on their cell phones. My, my phone does not have near as enough memory or capacity or yeah I don't want to do it on my phone um, and so I had a 35 millimeter camera that also did or not 35 millimeter a digital 
a digital camera that also did movies, but it wasn't doing long videos. It wouldn't let me do anything longer than like 15, 20 minutes. And as you guys know, my videos are longer than that. So, you know, I had to learn. I had to get new equipment. And, and I know that hopefully when I get my new studio space, which is coming after the backyard is done, um, I will have better lighting and I will have a more permanent place so I don't have to keep moving my camera and readjusting things all the time. So, you know, things I hope get better over time. Just saying. Um, you know, I'm done. I have no idea why I'm blabbering on about production quality on YouTube, but I am. You know, you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. And sometimes I forget what has come out of my mouth. And you guys comment on things that I did like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And I said, I said, what? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I sometimes will have to go back and watch some of my own videos to figure out what you guys are commenting on. But still comment. I love it when you comment. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Go out and do something nice for somebody today. Make the world a better place. Um, let's, let's bless this world with joy and peace, shall we? Love you guys. Bye.